Today, I am in Switzerland and I'm meeting with my friends here at Frasier. One thing I've learned about this company is over the over 90 years of development, one thing is certain. You feel like a VIP or even a VIC, a very important company, when you work with Frasier. Yes, you are that important. The development that goes into it, their one-on-one -on -one relationships, the fact that they study every tool for years and then give you that information so you don't have to try and just pick it from a catalog and try your best. Yes, we're gonna go through the entire facility to understand how these tools are made, how they're packaged and put together. We're even gonna talk a little bit to the people that are doing the R&D. We're gonna talk a little bit about production as well. The step-by-step -step process to help you understand exactly what Frasier means for almost a full century. So join me inside where Stefan is waiting because I cannot wait to show you this unique, one-of-a-kind facility. Stefan! Hey, wonderful! How Tony. good to see you! Hey, thank you very much. Great to have you here with Reza. I'm so excited. It's not every day <laughs> we get to walk into a facility like this to see what the future of manufacturing looks like. You are absolutely in the right place, Tony. I want to take you here with in the production of our hypertension tool. Uh, I will see there. Uh, we'll be fascinated what we are doing. I'm personally 20 years now developing here tools. I'm every day. I'm still fascinated to do with the team such a great product. So yes, let's I'll let's get started because 20 years, you are the right man for this camera work right now Absolutely. for the audience. That's for sure. I'm already seeing what looks to be dozens and yeah. dozens of yeah. grinding machines, yeah. which is obviously the core of what you're doing here. Absolutely. So metal carbide is our passion, passion for precision. You see here, yeah, different tools, uh, mostly different uh, diameters, lengths, but more than the, the bigger ones here. So here it's, it's going on really action and, and powerful grinding technology on those uh, Reinecker machines here. You see also how we produce those tools. Huh? First of all, there's always a rod. And then we have to put it in the machine, clamping system. And then we go with the grinding wheel in a slotting process. So the main material of the tool gets removed. And then finally we sharpening, we finishing over the front part of the tool. But you see all the other ones with a lot of teeth here. So finishing tools. We grind for such a tool here about 60 minutes. So an hour for one tool. Huh? There are other ones we are producing faster. But uh, it's really different here. You know, I come from, and let's continue to walk. I come from the machining world, and currently we discuss all the time, you know, done in ones and reducing cycle time. Yep. Are you doing the same thing inside of the grinding machines, putting in raw material and taking out a finished uh, cutting tool and yep. doing your very yep. best to combine operations and take cycle times from say 30 minutes to five minutes? Are you yep. doing all of that to make sure that you're getting your production, keep it up with the demand really because you guys continue to grow globally yeah, absolutely it's important we're standing here in the switzerland production so you know the salary is the price to produce out of switzerland most of our uh, products go out in europe uh, in the united states in china i have international competition producing all from switzerland is expensive so for sure we have to optimizing our process therefore the automatization is, is really important when you look at a, in a machine like that, you see the robot still holding here, the rod prepared for its operation. Then at the back side, we see though, the different grinding wheel packages. For sure, we have optimized during the last year, uh, not only the grinding strategy, only also with the grinding wheels, with the metal bounded wheels that we can dress with EDM technology. So that's really important. And I look at those products here. This is a multifunctional tool. That's not so sharp, it's a steel end mill. So Tony, <laughs> uh, Tony, as he stated, I have sharper Good ones. Good news, thank you. Yeah. But I will show you that afterwards, the thing on a machine, also 6.3 times the diameter length of cut. So your machine in, in a whole cut, uh, a, a workpiece. But what means that for us here? I have also to grind that really long cutting edge, so that takes a lot of time. 
uh, and therefore it is really important that we are performant also with, with our grinding strategy. Stefan, when I look at this tool and coming from a machinist background, I would certainly in my younger days hesitate to want to utilize this at full cut, yep. but you would advise people yep. to utilize the whole thing, yep. wouldn't you? Yep, absolutely. And that goes into your strategies and quality as well. Absolutely. The grinding part, Tony, is one thing. The developing before, that's then the whole story. To create a tool which is able to do that not only once, twice, every day. But what means that? I have to offer to the product also knowledge. How you have to do that? The strategy, the programming and all that. We will see that later. That's a main part of our intention of Fresa Intention. Giving it all, not only high performance products, giving us the knowledge how to use the product. Uh, Stefan, that is one of the major details I want to talk with you about on this tour uh, is the, the in-depth wisdom that you and your team have here that you provide to your customers. You have milling strategies. You don't just offer a cutting tool. I used to get cutting tools and have to figure it out on my own, but uh, you offer no. milling strategies. Now, that's a segue we're gonna talk about in just a minute because I wanna step back uh, in conversation to the importance of automation. Yep. You've already pointed out the robots. Yep. I look around and I see them everywhere throughout the facility. Yep. I look around and I see um, a few a few people here, few but people a majority here. of those machines are running on their own. Absolutely. What do you think is the importance of automation here? The importance of the automation is for sure once the infrastructure, but at the other hand also products that they can integrate in an automatization product, productivity production. So I still in the development have to think how I can produce the tool, this tool, in which tolerances I have to be really precise where perhaps I have a little bit more possibilities to increase the tolerance. So focusing also in the production uh, development, I would say that is really important. And at yeah. the other hand, we invest yearly a lot of time to make uh, automatization uh, better combined. It. You see here, for example, also our smart pallets. Perhaps we go over there, we will see that. So I know at the beginning of a production here with its smart pallet here, you see the, the RFID chip on it. So the tool rods, they get prepared before uh, all the way the robot in the small pallet. And from the beginning on, I know exactly this is this tool. Uh, this is this order here. The machine knows it. And finally, this pallet goes until the end of the production with the tool. So that's, that's also one part of automatization. And for sure, you see here also the grinding wheels. The grinding wheel is such an important element of our production for the quality, for the wear on a grinding wheel, the stability of the process. So all those combined finally makes uh, uh, automation uh, even more performant than, than we've got in the past. Truly a great answer, Stefan. Thank you for sharing that. Let's slide over this direction. We have so much to see today. Yeah. And uh, I want to go back to what I had segued to before, because when I think about Fraser, I think about a company that started in 1934. All right, so yeah. we're over 90 years of development, yeah. Yeah. and you guys pride yourselves on being the best. This yeah. quality product yeah. that, from the design, from the automation, to the coding, which is so important, yeah. to yeah. being able to measure everything, because you can't make something if you can't measure something, right? Absolutely. And your philosophy, stepping back to what we brought up earlier, is you want to make sure that when people work with you, they have a full solution. Yep. You've created ability on your website, 
to, to pick a tool and understand the tool and understand the process. It's not just about giving you a call and saying, hey man, I need a, a 10 millimeter tool and I'm cutting aluminum. Uh, or as we say in Europe, aluminum, uh, right? Aluminium. But it's not we're, not, we're not doing that here. You are giving a full solution. Yeah. Can you describe to the audience what 90 plus years of dedication to that understanding and partnership does for anyone who yeah. invests in a partnership with Fraser? Yes, thank you very much. Tony, to give this question and uh, so the basic of all that, as he said, is 90 years of experience and culture. For sure, we began with the technology, the tool technology, the performance, that is the base. So a tool has to work and it has to work daily and annually, always on the same performance level. But as you said, that's not enough. The performance level is today so high. And the question is always how we transfer this performance level to all our customers. So we have to give knowledge with it. And that we integrate in, in our tool expert, in our uh, tool um, uh, software. So therefore we invest also a lot of, of trials of, of developments to do that. But finally we need also partners to uh, create this whole story, this milling system. Uh, we need partners uh, in, in the automatization, in the production technology, but also in the applications technology. We can't do that ourselves. And one part, most important part, it doesn't help if we are freaks and specialists herein. No, we have to transfer it to the market. And therefore, our sales, our, our application engineers, daily by our customers, guiding them, helping them to implement those products of this quality and this performance, understanding what are the needs of, of the problems of those customers, helping them and giving us also feedback. So that's a sharing of knowledge, of culture, of willing to go together into the future. And, and that's what we are standing for. So we are really open to discuss always transparency, what is to do, where we want to go, where perhaps we have certain opportunities to work on. And then we go there in and always be also critical and validate us ourselves that we can guarantee quality. I can give you here, for example, this tool. This is now a high precision uh, ball nose tool. It's, it's not the precision one we do, but, but you see here, uh, the tolerance uh, that we've get here, we, we are we are talking about microns here. So the the, the radius of, of the tool is is plus plus three micron minus uh, six one. And look now here it is measured it, and that's also a Fraser element. The tolerance of a ball nose here is over the whole nose, and you know, you know when you two teeth, it's really difficult to part in the front of the tool, the guarding here, this tolerance, and look at that, how many measure points he do here, he produce here to hold exactly this tolerance. For our customers, it's so important that they can get finally exactly this diameter programming in their CAM program, and they know, yes, the mall finally is especially in this quality that I have to do. So that's also a service that we give with our products. For sure, the performance, the tool lifetime of the products has to be all of the state of its art, but here that's an additional bar. Something I wanna slide into because we're gonna head in the general direction of grinding, and that's another one of your areas that's it's quite fascinating to me. Yeah. But along this journey, I wanna talk a little bit about your eco-friendliness and your awareness of energy consumption. Yep. Energy consumption has been an issue around the world over the last few years yep. that they keep doubling, tripling, quadrupling the, the overall cost of energy. And it is very important to you guys here at Fraser and some of the partners here in Switzerland to do everything you can to reduce costs. Mm -hmm. Would you mind describing what efforts you go into when you design a cutting tool of maybe reducing energy by 20% or 10% or 30%. And can you translate that for the audience so they understand exactly what that 20% means yeah. to maybe driving a car or something yeah. like that? Yeah, great, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, Tony, thank you very much. That's a, also a personal intention to reduce energy consumption. 
and we have still a lot of possibilities to do that. I can give you an example. I've developed a, a tool concept that we launched in 2023. It's named eCut for Alu, so aluminum machining. And the task there was to make a really smooth cutting tool, smoother than even all what we've got until now. Because in the past, we always put a little bit more security, pressure, bigger rake angle on the tool. So that, 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 was, uh, that was okay. But with this new development, we reduced the consumption of spindle power 20%. It's impressive. It's impressive. Yes. That is, it has to do with, with the rake angle, with the, the, the slot geometry, it has to do with the, with the grooves that are really smooth grinded. But what means that not 20% less energy consumption? Yes, you can drive with a car 19,000 kilometers when you take an old diameter can tool, that's only a small tool, and put in a new one. Those, this tool, when it runs a year in a production, the, the saving of energy, energy consumption is 19,000 kilometers, or you can heat the house 190 days, and for sure you can also save a lot of money. And additionally, you made a really good footprint also for yeah. the same work.